Hello everyone, I have a word for you and the word is the captives will be set free. There are things in your life that have been locked out. Or you could be locked out. There was something that has, that has been holding your blessings, that has been holding your miracles, but you will be set free. Whom the Son of Man has set free, whom Jesus has set free, is free indeed. There is no turning back if he has set you free. Because when he brings you out of darkness, when he brings you out of captivity, and you see the light, you can never go back to the old things. Because you have seen what it is to live. You will be set free from that thing that has been tormenting you year after year, from that pain that you have been having. Some of you are, sometimes have a certain condition that, that comes on them at a certain period of time that affects them in certain seasons. But it's a time where you are going to be set free. Now, there is a prophet in the scriptures that I, 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 I was reading about, and his name is Ezekiel. Now, for those that do not know about Ezekiel, Ezekiel was called by God, and Ezekiel was given a scroll, and God told him, eat the scroll that is before him. So when Ezekiel ate the scroll, the scripture says, it tasted as sweet as honey. That is how the word of God is. When you eat of the word, it will taste as sweet as honey. Yes, at first, you may, you, you may find it quite not good for you because it, is, it could be something new to you. But the more you meditate on it, the more you read it, the more you eat of the word, it will taste as sweet as honey to you. Then, uh, after Ezekiel had eaten the scroll, the Lord took him to a place and he came to, to a river where there were captives there. And the scripture says that Ezekiel remained there and, and the scripture says he sat where they sat. He, and he was astonished for seven days. He spoke no word. Now I was wondering, why is it that he sat where they sat? Why does the scripture say that he sat where they sat? It is very important to understand that when he sat where they sat, it means that he understood them. He came as them. He sat among them. If they were poor, he became poor so that he can relate to them. The same thing that Jesus did. He sat where we sit. He knows what it is to be hungry. In, he knows what it is to go through temptation because he, the scripture says he was tempted in all ways. Jesus knows what it is to be poor because he became poor so that you may become rich. He sat where we sit. He came in a human flesh, in a human body. He experienced what we experience so that he can become an example to us so that we may not have any excuse. He overcame sin so that we can overcome sin. He sat where we sit. Now, uh, a few days ago, I was speaking to one of my subscribers and we had really a very interesting a conversation uh, and this man is really anointed uh, God has called him to the kids ministry to minister to the children and to minister to drug addicts who are on the streets now I told him that uh, for you to be able to reach out to those people you need to sit where they sit Known that you, you need to uh, be to their, you need to conform to their 
uh, woe thinking, but you need to lower down yourself. You need to humble down yourself. You need to talk to them. You, so that when, when, you, when, when you come to them, they can relate with you. That's why you see when God uses somebody, when God usually, I, I talked about this, God does not usually use perfect people. He will take somebody who has been a mess, somebody who has gone through a lot of problems to rescue somebody else. Because that person can relate to that person. If that person had go, has gone through a lot of stuff, when he comes to speak to another person who is who's facing the same problem, they can kind of relate. It's not like the other person is trying to look down on the other person, but he's, he, he sits where he, he sits. And I also told uh, uh, my subscriber that uh, that to the kids' ministry, you'll find that uh, most of the people who are in the kids' ministry, when they are around kids, they tend to try to act like kids. All of a sudden, they are speaking like kids. They play like kids. They laugh like kids. They jump like kids. The thing is, they sit where the kids sit. Because if they, if, if, if they, for them to relate with the kids, for them to receive acceptance from the kids, the kids have to see it with their own eyes that these, these people are acting like us. They are like us. They're not different from us. Despite the fact that they are older than us, they can relate with us. And it's a special gift. Those who are in the kids' ministry, it is also a special gift. It's a special calling. Not everyone can be in a kid's ministry. Not everyone can deal with kids. Kids are not easy to deal with because you will find some of them who are really, really stubborn. But it takes somebody who has been called for that specific thing to talk to them, to train them, to teach them things that they will understand. You need to sit where they sit. The captives will be set free is the word that I have for you. Ezekiel sat where the captives sit and he set them free because God had called him. God had instructed him. God is sending you out to people. Some people could be rebellious. Some people could not even know you. In fact, they may not accept you. But for you to be able to deliver your message, there are certain things that you need to do. For them to understand. And most of these things the Holy Spirit will teach you. Some of the things you may not learn them by. Someone may never teach you these things. But the Spirit of God, the more you read the Word of God, the more you, you will become like Him. You, you put off your old self. You will shed off your old self. You will no longer be selfish, but you will be a person that is moved by love. Because God is love. For you to minister, for you to uh, rescue somebody, in most cases, it is it's supposed to be love. Love works. Even when you are going to the captives, it's supposed to be love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but be saved. That he should have everlasting life. You will be set free. The enemy has been holding you for so long, but your time has come. Your time has come to come out of that cage. Some of you have been locked out. It seems like there are days where you feel like you are useless, where you feel like you cannot contribute anything. But God say, He's saying to you that you are valuable. He made you 
with a purpose. You have a purpose. There is a reason as to why you are still alive at this moment. There is a reason as to why you are listening to me right now. You are very important than you think. There is a load that you do not know about yourself. There is a load that you have not discovered of, of, of the things that God has placed in you. But the day you will find out, you will not be the same again. You will be victorious. You will be set free. Well, I hope this word has been a blessing to you. I hope it has encouraged you. If you have any question, you can go ahead and ask. Likewise, you can also uh, press that uh, like button. Share this video with somebody else. Let them know of this, of, of this knowledge. Because there are, there are a lot of people that are unaware of such things. You, don't know, you, do, you may not know how many people you are saving by sharing this information with them. Until next time, be blessed.